Welcome to Big E's Bricks. Today I'm excited to be bringing you a new series that I like to call Pieces from My Childhood. In this series I'll be taking a look back at sets that I owned when I was a kid. I'll be talking about the minifigures, the features, any pros and cons I can think of. So this is set 7141 Nabu Fighter. It was originally released in 1999, has a piece count of 179, and it retailed for 1999. That is US dollars. I can remember one of my friends getting this set, and I thought it was really cool. But it wasn't actually until a couple years after it would have been retired that I got this set. I had learned about BrickLink around that time, and my mom had ordered it from me on there. Now let's take a look at the set. Get this out of the way. Start out with the instructions. It's being an older set, it does not have the parts needed for each step, so you just kind of have to look at the picture and figure out what's changed from the previous step. One thing I really like about this has the minifigures with their names on it. I thought that was a neat feature that they actually don't do on at least some current sets. I've looked at some of the other instruction booklets I have and they're obviously a bit different than this. And the last page is the last step. There's no ads in the back for Lego Shop Online. There's no advertisements for other sets. Just ends suddenly. So we'll take a look at the minifigures. Set includes Anakin Skywalker, R2-D2, and two battle droids. Now this was before Lego had released the kid legs. So Anakin Skywalker is tall. He has his helmet with goggles. And as a kid, I really always liked this piece. I thought it was really neat. I liked how the goggles could pop on and off. He has a very simple build, simple printing, nothing on the back, no reverse head printing. We've got the classic R2-D2, which even today I think holds up pretty well. It has pretty good printing looks clean and smooth and then the battle droids here which really have not changed in over 20 years now barring the arm update where they now hold the modern blasters at a regular angle instead of sideways not really much you can say about them Next, we'll move on to the side build here. Growing up, I never knew what this was. And right now, I still do not. I really have no memory of this from the movie. Some kind of little buggy thing. I don't know if it was meant to be a radar dish. I don't know. But if somebody out there knows, leave a comment for me. Let me know what is this thing. I have no memory of it from the movie. And granted, it has been a couple years since I've watched Phantom Menace. But even as a kid, with all that stuff fresh in my mind, I did not know what this was. If anybody out there knows, let me know. Now moving on to the main build. Yeah, it's blocky. It's not very smooth. But you really can't fault it for that. It was released in... 1999. They used the pieces they had available to them at the time. Doesn't have chromed out pieces, unlike the Ultimate Collector Series Naboo Fighter, but it keeps the price down. It would have been a lot more expensive with chromed out parts. Light gray looks fine. And you can certainly tell it's a Naboo Fighter. It clearly represents the ship that they were trying to make recognizable. So talk about the features. As a kid, I always loved that R2-D2 could fit fully inside rather than just having his head. If I can get him in there. He's not cooperating. There he goes. 
So as a kid, like I said, I loved that he could fit inside. I remember some of the other starfighters I had growing up, like the original Jedi Interceptor from Star Wars Episode 3, along with the V-Wing Fighter, also from Episode 3, and the Astromech just had their head stuck on it. They didn't have room for the whole body, so they just put a head on it. I really like that the whole body of the Astromech can fit inside. Anakin Skywalker slides in there nicely. For the cockpit, it's open, and to close it, just take it off, slide it back, stick it on there. Simple enough. Has some nice little detailing on the printed pieces here. Now that's certainly something that LEGO could bring back and I'd be quite happy with. More printed pieces instead of stickers. One complaint I, guess I had as a kid, you have this turret on the bottom. Often would have this piece pop off as I was swooshing it around, playing with it. You had, you know, yeah, see, that also likes to fall off. Another complaint I had with it was, oh yeah, wow, that does like to fall off there. Okay. Another complaint I had was these little thin, pointy thingy pieces. I don't know what you want to call them, but they could easily pop off as you're playing with it, swooshing around. They had a tendency to fall off. I remember for a while I just took this long one off the back and just left it off because I was tired of it falling off. See, another feature that I really liked about this set, I guess it's technically not a feature, but I liked that these little side engine pieces popped off quite nicely. Could easily have the ship get damaged in battle. Just pop right off there. Show some damage. That was fun. Let's see. Any other standout pieces in the set? Growing up, I always really enjoyed these engine pieces. I thought they were fun. I liked using them to make my own ships. Really like the clear cockpit piece. And that's about it for pieces that really stood out to me that I enjoyed using in my own builds. Now we're taking a look at everything. In conclusion, would I recommend this set? As a kid, definitely. I love this thing. I had it built for many years before I even decided to take it apart and take the pieces for my own builds. Nowadays, it, yeah, it's doesn't quite hold up to the current standards, but again, you can't really fault it. They used what they had with the pieces that were available back in the day. That covers about everything with this. It's a small, simple build, but I have some really good memories with this set, and I enjoy it. If you like that review, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, feedback. Really appreciate it. Any other sets you'd like me to review? Any other ideas you have for me? Let me know. Shoot me a comment. Till next time, this has been Biggie's Bricks with the very first episode of Pieces from My Childhood. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.